Dragon Ball Z. One of the very first shows that introduced me and made me an instant fan of the anime genre since I was a little kid. It has been over a year that I wanted to create a photo manipulation of probably my favorite character all around, Son Goku. But I didn't have the courage to do so until now. Today I will create a photorealistic Goku in Photoshop. Well, I didn't use a cosplay image as I felt that would be cheating and may also have copyright issues, so everything will be done with standard stock images from scratch. While taking references for the scene, I think Goku's first Super Saiyan transformation in the Frieza saga is a major turning point, so I'll create something revolving around that. Alright, without further ado, let's go Super Saiyan and let's create. First I needed a base pose. So I used this Muay Thai Fighter 3D render, which I downloaded for free from Adobe Stock. I think he perfectly fits the hero pose I had in my mind for Goku. I quickly selected him out using the subject selection tool and then pressed Q to activate the quick mask mode. You can paint with black and white in quick mask mode like you would do in a normal mask to fine tune the edges. Next I went into the liquify face aware tool section to tweak the facial features a bit. I tried to bring him close to the anime or manga artwork of Goku and how the character would look in real life. I did some overpainting, sampling colors from the skin to remove the arm and headbands. Next I dropped this guy and will use him as an overlay on our base. The skin of the 3D model looked very plastic, so some modifications were necessary. I used the lasso tool to slice out the matching portions of the body from the stock on the left and used free transforms warp section to match it with the base on the right. For the seams, I painted with a brush sampling the nearby skin color and blended the patchwork. I must mention it took very long to find a stock figure matching the base pose with the correct body type that would fit. Plus I also wanted to have the lighting already laid out as it would make our life easy afterward. The photo has the light coming from the top which fulfills my requirement as I will add a glowing Super Saiyan style here. By the way, this image is from Envato Elements and the others are from various sources like Adobe Stock, Unsplash and others. I will add the links in the description section in case you want them. I sampled areas from the blue track pants to create Goku's Gi but I'll refine and replace it later. I used curves on the face to brighten it up and match it with the body stone. To fix the same issue of the plastic-like skin of the 3D model in the face, I sampled some areas from the stock on the left, but I was skeptical if replacing too much of the facial texture would ruin the look. I tried to fix the spine area a bit, but it didn't work quite well so I'll address it later. I also occasionally use the clone stem tool to sample skin textures from the shoulder and back and place some of them on the face. After some minor corrections here and there, I placed some images from Dragon Ball Z for reference and started working on the distinctive features of the character. Now it's time to create Goku's iconic Super Saiyan hair. I think this blonde spiked hair of the Dragon Ball characters really made the series memorable, stand out from the rest and created its signature style. I started with a hairbrush and an earthy yellow color to outline the basic shape. Then I switched to a regular soft round brush to work on the volume and shading. I had the size of the brush controlled with the pressure sensitivity of my pen tablet and with it I could make the hair strands taper out. To create any hair, it's always best to work on separate layers, keeping the darker shades on the bottom layers and slowly building up the volume with lighter colors on the top layers. It took a lot of time and patience to slowly build up the hair strand by strand and I don't think there is an alternative to this. By the way, if you like this realistic anime photo manipulation, do let me know in the comments. I have a lot of plans to create similar pieces for other popular titles like Naruto, One Piece, Attack on Titan and I would like to hear your views on that. While painting the hair, I also filled the layer with black and put it to linear dodge blending mode as painting on that started creating the groundwork for the glowing hair strands.
Once I was somewhat satisfied with the hair, I started adding some details to the face, like frown brows, texture on the cheeks and others. I felt Goku's body needs to be a bit more buffed up, so I went into the liquify tools and carefully did the changes with the forward warp tool. The spine area was really bothering me, so I tried to fix it by patching some parts from a different image and did some basic color matching with curves and hue saturation. For the build, I warped this image into place, added a hue saturation and used the colorize section to add a quick blue color change. I added some finer details on top of it by painting with a soft round brush and some varied shades of blue. With the build done, it was time to get his pants right. I spent almost an hour finding the correct pants that would match up with his dress and also align with the crumpled cloth around the belt. I was lucky enough to find this gym guy photo. I used free transform warp and some masking and paint overs to blend it in place. I also used parts from the orange shorts to create the torn gi on top of the belt. It should have two layers as he wears a blue vest under the orange dress. So I just warped the cloth texture to create some variations and on the layer mask painted the torn and tattered areas. I salvaged the same parts to create the blue wristbands. With that done, I spent some more time fine tuning the hair. Added more texture, light and shadow variation and extra volume. All the time, I tried to keep it in line with the original artwork. Well here you might feel I'm being a bit too nitpicky but this open hands really bothered me. Because wherever you see this pose of Goku, he has his fists clutched. So it took some time to find stocks with the right fists that match the character here. I forgot to add the fluttering hanging part of the belt. So I quickly added it, sampling parts from the same clothes that I used to create the other parts of his dress. I painted in the layer mask to give a torn and tattered look. Now it's time for the environment. I just wanted to keep it very simple but at the same time complement and help accentuate the main character. I started by dropping a dark sky and mountain terrain. This will help set up the general mood of the scene. I also warped it down towards the center so that it creates a natural movement of the eye towards the main focus. I added some quick curves to darken it up so that the cluing hair stands out even more. I dropped some rocky cliffs on both sides and turned them pretty dark using curves. Once again I kept it pretty simple as the main focus must be at the center. Then it's time to spice up the composition with one of the most distinctive features of the Dragon Ball series, floating rocks when the fighters power up. For this, I took some rocks at different angles that I downloaded from Envato Elements 3D section. If you want to get an unlimited download of stock assets via Envato Elements subscription, you can use the link in the description section of this video. While placing the rocks, I made sure to keep the direction of the light aligned. That will again help save time during the highlighting process. Sometimes I cut out small rock fragments from a larger rock using the lasso tool and filled up the scene. Also, I needed to be a little careful about their placement as placing too many rocks can make the scene look cluttered. I darkened the rocks using some simple curves but painted on the layer mask to hide the dark color cast around the areas where it will catch some light. Now for the highlights on the glowing hair, I dabbed some pale yellow color on a layer set to linear dodge blending mode. Then I added the curves in a dark bluish tone and on the layer mask I masked off the areas where the light will fall. For this image I tried to guess how the light would react to the well defined muscles and painted them. Next I clipped another curves adjustment layer in a pretty dark tone of blue and added some immediate shadows in areas like the eye socket, below the nose and others. 
for adding some general lighting on the rocks, I took a blank layer, filled it with black, changed the blending mode to linear dodge and then painted with a pale yellow color. In the meantime, I brushed some yellow color over the distant mountains on a layer set to soft light blending mode. The background looked too monotonous and the hint of sunset would add a nice dash of color. I added some smoke as well to better separate Goku from the backdrop and warped them to align with the curved shape that we applied to the mountains. For any rim light, I made sure to keep them subtle and not overdo it, as I really wanted this piece to look realistic. I simply added a vibrance and brightness contrast boost for the general color grading. Next I painted some bruises and cut marks to justify that Goku must have been in a violent fight and also to justify his torn dress. Also, how can I not make the eyes green? I dropped some layers in color dodge and linear dodge blending mode and brushed some sea green color. For the key or the energy aura, I was not sure if the version from the anime would look good, so I went with some realistic improvisations. I used the standard fire photo and changed it to a pale yellow color using hue saturation. Then I cut different areas from it and warped it into place. On top of it, I used the smudge tool for the final look. I fine-tuned the color in the eyes a bit and painted some electric arcs on a layer set to color dodge blending mode. You might argue that the electric arcs appear for the Super Saiyan 2 form, but we can always have some creative freedom, right? For our subtle underglow, I took a layer in color dodge blending mode and brushed some blue violet color. Finally, for some special effects, I took a snapshot of everything and added a motion blur, which I masked only in the bottom parts of the floating rocks. I also added some field blur for the distant objects and some lens corrections for a chromatic aberration. And finally, added some grain on top of everything. I spent some more time fine tuning different areas. And here goes the final result. Please let me know if you like the artwork and most importantly let me know what you think about this as I am very excited to create realistic photo manipulations of other anime characters and would love to hear your thoughts. Also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my overall content. Well then I will see you in the next video and till then enjoy creating.